Dame Vera Lynn, one of the most popular British entertainers of the past century, the singer known as the Forces Sweetheart throughout the Second World War, has died at the age of 103. Dame Vera's songs, including We'll Meet Again and The White Cliffs of Dover, became enormously popular not only among the armed forces, but also in homes across the United Kingdom, as she lifted spirits and gave hope to so many people. In later years, Dame Vera fought hard to win fair treatment, for example, for the war widows. The Prime Minister said her voice would live on for generations to come. Our correspondent Robert Hall looks back at a remarkable life. It is a voice that has spanned the decades. The voice of an ordinary London girl born at the end of the First World War who became an iconic symbol of the second. Vera Welch, daughter of a plumber and a dressmaker, began singing as a child. She took her grandmother's surname, Lynn, as a stage name, made her first record aged 19 and sold a million records in the next three years. This little girl from East Ham would never have had the opportunity if she hadn't have been singing, if my mother hadn't put me on the stage. This letter of mine is getting to be a sort of rendezvous where husbands and wives torn apart by war, can be brought together by music. When war broke out again, Vera began broadcasting with the BBC. Through a forces request programme, Sincerely Yours, she became the girl that thousands of fighting men hoped they'd meet when they returned home, although some accused the programme of damaging the war effort. Too sentimental, making the boys homesick and... I said, that's rubbish, a lot of rubbish, I said, because the, the letters are, are so thankful for the, for the programmes. Vera was a star, but her desire to do more took her to meet fans halfway around the world. So they said, well, where do you want to go? I said, well, if I'm going in, I know uh, Europe are getting well supplied. I want to go somewhere where there isn't any entertainment. So they said, well, Burma's the only place, you know. She kept a record of her jungle adventures in a secret diary. I took my little diary, my little pencil, and just about see it, tiny little writing. Slept on stretcher, oh yes, balanced on two kitchen chairs. A rotten night, I should think so. It's not being awarded you, you earned it. You earned it. More. It was another 40 years before Vera Lynn received her own Burma star. By then, she was Dame Vera Lynn and as busy as ever. Am I allowed to kiss you? In 1995, Dame Vera led the singing outside Buckingham Palace to mark the 50th anniversary of VE Day. She topped the charts, age 93, in 2010. And on her 100th birthday, she listened to the children of her old school and remembered the singing coach who she had ignored. When she heard me sing, she says, no, I can't train that voice. <laughs> it's not a natural voice. So I said, well, thank you very much, madam, and left. Keep smiling through, just like you always do. Dame Vera was still with us this year as communities were tested by the current pandemic. A unifying spirit reflected on by the Queen during her recent very personal message. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. We meet again. Don't know where. Don't know where. Vera Lynn was never happier than when she was with the veterans she still called my boys. The words that meant so much will survive long after they have left us.
And as we saw there, Dame Vera's popularity did not fade after the war ended, far from it. She found new generations of admirers and no major commemoration of the Second World War was complete without her presence. Just last month, she became the oldest artist to achieve a top 40 album in the UK. And the tributes paid today have come from all over the world, as our correspondent Sarah Campbell tells us. On the 75th anniversary of VE Day, with the country in lockdown, the nation turned once again to the songs of Dame Vera Lynn. Few people have resonated through the decades in the way she managed to. She's always been there, obviously. She's my mum. Um, and she's always been this star, the younger um, uh, military element. Uh, uh, also think she's wonderful and part of them. So it's not just the older generation. Two veterans at the Royal Hospital Chelsea, aged 90 and 73, too young to have fought in the Second World War, but to them, her songs are still special. People in the army, particularly when they're away fighting, uh, you're lonely for home, you know, you, you can't forget it sort of thing. And she was home to them. She put so much emotion and feeling into a singer, and it was different. It was, it was home for them. You know. So, what were your immediate thoughts when you heard today that she'd died? <laughs> well, I think we're going to expect it was going to happen at some time, but I think her name will go on for a long, long time. You know, that, that's the way. You know, we'll always remember. In London today. Coldstream Guards played their own tribute to her. She was the force's sweetheart, in later life campaigning for veterans and their families, and in her younger years, fearless in her support for the troops. In tribute to her today, the Prime Minister tweeted that she'd entranced and uplifted the country in some of its darkest hours. The singer, Catherine Jenkins, who recently recorded a duet with Dame Vera, described her as a legend, an inspiration, my mentor and my friend. And here at home in East Sussex, she will be greatly missed. I found her a very kind, caring person uh, who was so friendly towards everyone. Vera was a lovely person. She would, uh, she would be quite happy speaking to everybody. Uh, her London roots uh, came through uh, very well uh, sh uh, with, with no airs and graces. An inspiration and a source of hope to so many. The emotion Dame Vera Lynn managed to convey never lessened. The many tributes to the forces, sweetheart, Dame Vera Lynn, who's died at the age of 103.